Tonight, MPP forced to begin mending cracks ahead of make or break December 27 parliamentary, uh, the, the January 27 parliamentary primaries following the disqualification of 17 aspirants. Out of the 373, 11 were disqualified, 326 were qualified, two were referred to neck, two stepped down, 29 went unopposed. Incomplete form, we had one. No appearance, we had two. We're here from across the country and from the party. Top story is always brought to you by Vodafone. And tonight, the new patriotic party has been forced to begin mending cracks ahead of its make or break 27th January parliamentary primaries across the country. In fact, last night, we learned from the party that 17 aspirants, parliamentary aspirants, have been disqualified. We'll go through the breakdown for you pretty shortly. But first, listen to the General Secretary of the Party, Justin Kudia from Paul. Out of the 373, 11 were disqualified, 326 were qualified, two were referred to neck, two stepped down, 29 went unopposed. Incomplete form, we had one, no appearance, we had two making it 373. The new development is that we have one court case. The party has been served with a writ and also an application for interlocutory injunction with respect to Inshayasu. And for that matter, elections in Inshayasu constituency has been stand down until the court process has been addressed. The National Executive Committee also talked about Martha pending in Sunyani East. As you may recall, the High Court annulled the album of Sunyani East constituency. So today, upon several deliberations by the National Executive Committee, and in our attempt to ensure peace and stability in Sunyani East constituency, the National Executive Committee has directed that the constituency album that existed in 2018 which has the polling station executives is the album that we are going to use in this current dispensation. And where people have died or people have traveled, the national party in consultation with the regional party and the committee that has been established will do elections in those uh, vacant positions. Again, the national executive committee shall appoint people to act as acting electoral area coordinators and acting constituency executive to further notice. Finally, I'll go back to the Inshayasu uh, constituency that I made a statement that the party has received a rate of sermon and application for interlocutory injunction with, with respect to Mr. Kennedy Kwesi Kankam. And the party legal team will respond accordingly in due course. Well, my colleague uh, in the studio with me to try and break down the numbers and also hear from some of the uh, individuals affected uh, by this. Uh, uh, with me is uh, James Avaji uh, and also Brace, uh, Kojo Brace with the political desk is also uh, with me uh, on this. Uh, James, yes. uh, let's break this down a bit more because the party says 11 disqualified. But of course, if you look at the uh, total picture, it comes down to 17. This, this, uh, let's break that down. So the 11 we heard from the uh, party general secretary in that order was actually referring to the you know we they had appeals committee at the regional levels across the country mm -hmm. and so the numbers they have received from the appeals committee across the country before the next uh, the ones that came to the national appeals committee was actually 11 from across the country then the national appeals committee took decision on some six which were added to the 11 that came from the various uh, regions giving a total of 17. Now, when you look at the press release that they have given out yesterday after that uh, press conference at the back of the National Council meeting, we have 17 persons who have been disqualified in all. Then three uh, also stepped down at the end of the day. Then we have 
33 people going into the elections unopposed, sitting MPs going into the elections unopposed. And then one person had been dragged to court, that is a uh, Kankam uh, Boedu in the, uh, uh, I mean, in Shaisu yeah, constituency. So, can the question can come? Exactly, leading to an injunction put on the election in that particular constituency. And so when you look at the numbers, a total of 376 actually picked the nomination. Now, when you take the 17 that have been disqualified and then the th uh, three that stepped down and one person who is in court now, if you take that 21 out of the 376, you have a total of 355 aspirants that has been qualified in that list that have been released. But only 373 short of two persons would appear on the ballot papers on January 27. That is because in the Inshaisu constituency where the uh, court injunction have been placed on the election, there are two other candidates in addition to Kennedy Kankam who were supposed to go into that election. And so if you take those two other persons who have been affected by that court injunction placing the election on hold, we have a total of 353 persons who will be appearing on ballot across the country on January 27. And so that's what the, uh, the figures are looking like, Evans. And that election will be happening in a total of 136 constituencies across the country, including some constituencies in the voter region that were not able to, often constituencies that have not been able to hold their election when the often constituency elections happened earlier. Mm, and we'll hear from one in that uh, instance where mm. we, we did the last elections in the often constituencies. Mm. Are we hearing today from one of the aspirants who was uh, disqualified then, who's now speaking. Uh, she's quit the party, going independent. We'll talk about that pretty mm. separately. I want to bring in uh, Kwesi, uh, Michael Michael also took his own petition there, referencing the uh, petition by the constituency executives. Sure. As we know, the party disregarded the petitions from the uh, from that and cleared all of the other uh, individuals to go against Katie Hammond, who, as we know now, uh, is hanging on, on by thread. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that story, because yeah. that is one of the areas to watch, yeah. considering the decision the party is taking. So, the, I mean, we have 14 executive members who put, a, put up this petition. They are challenging the legitimacy of three of the contenders uh, to contest these primaries. Now, they list Samuel Benford Dakwa. Uh, they also uh, list someone like Enoch Bwachi at Champon. And then uh, the third person being Kwabana Asamwa. Now, for the first person who is in the person of Samuel Benford Dakwa, they say that he uh, donated a, a pickup to the constituency in the year 2020 when he came to contest the 2020 parliamentary primaries at Adanse Asokwa. Now, they are saying that after he lost the primaries, he came to deceive them, took the donated pickup away, and never returned it. They, they, they are also saying that he has since not been part of any party activity uh, in the constituency. They believe that uh, Samuel Benford Dankwa belongs to the group of people who never associate themselves with the Adansia Sokwa MPP and never contribute anything to the constituency party, but only show up when there are parliamentary primaries, and therefore they want him to be, you know, uh, disqualified. Now, the party secretary says, I, Samuel Awi, have been an assistant secretary, acting secretary, and substantive secretary of the constituency party continuously for the past 14 years. I was the substantive secretary at the time of the last election. Samuel Benfo Dakwa has never been part of any constituency activity and has never made any contribution to the constituency that I know of in the various capacities I have indicated. So they want him to be disqualified. It's in the same direction that they make for the other two, uh, you know, contenders. In Ogboache, a champion. For him, they say that they have never come across him. That's in Ogboache, a champion. In any constituency activity, nor has he made any contribution to the constituency party for the period they have been the executives. And, uh, you know, they say that, and then they, they conclude by saying that 
they want the committee to disqualify him mm. to contest in this election. It's similar uh, that of Kwabna Asamoah. They say that they have never uh, come across him, Kwabna Asamoah, in any constituency activity, nor has he made any contribution to the constituency for the period they have been in office. And therefore, they think that he does not deserve to contest in this election. Mm. Uh, it's based on this that... Uh, Katie Hammond referenced and wrote his own petition to the national to say that he disagrees with uh, you know the the, the regional uh, 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 committee for passing uh, those three. It is definitely one of the key areas uh, to watch. And as we've been talking about, as we speak tonight, another area that has become pretty controversial has been put on hold mm -hmm. right now uh, is the uh, Sokori Mampon uh, area. Can uh, they can come uh, in the in, in that uh, in, in Chai, so Hmm. Uh, area has yes. also become pretty controversial indeed. Uh, we'll speak to him pretty shortly hmm. on on what has been happening. We'll also hear from the uh, from the party on this. In fact, let's bring in uh, Kennedy Kwesi Kankam of the Nshaisa constituency who joins us on the telephone line right now. Kennedy, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Um, you're welcome. Um, like, give me a quick update. Has it made any progress on this matter uh, tonight? Which, which, your, which your primary? I know you've spent a lot of time uh, looking forward to 27th. Well, I think the update that I can give to you is that um, there's a, a perception that has been created in the public that um, Kennedy Kwasikankam has taken the New Patriotic Party to court. I just want to correct that impression that I have not been to court, neither with my campaign team or any of my supporters taking the New Patriotic Party to court. We believe in the structures of the party. We believe in the grievances procedure in the party. And we are looking forward that uh, the party will come out with a verdict that will be in the, big, the biggest interest of the party. Now, you say you did not file this, uh, but people have suggested that you did. And I see that um, the polling station a executives there, a polling station executives filed this particular suit to stop yourself from contesting. Um, the, the issues that they've put forward, though, have you had an opportunity to engage on the ground to understand why these issues had come up? Honestly speaking, um, I haven't got hold of the, the sermons. I've not been served by anybody, by any court. So it will be out of order for me to start talking about something that I don't have first hand information on. They filed a suit asking for you to be restrained and yet you still haven't received nothing. Uh, you I've haven't received anything said, on this. As I'm talking to you, I have not been served by any courts in the on the land. Mm. What about the party itself? As we know, this uh, process has been put on hold. Yesterday it was communicated. Have you heard anything from the National Party? Yeah, of course. Um, I believe in the party and I believe in the leadership of the party. If I've heard uh, the general secretary of the party talking about it. So if the general secretary of the party is talking about issues bothering the party, who am I to say that I don't, I don't support it? So the general secretary has spoken and I'm taking it in a good faith. But also I just want to put it on record that I have not been by the court. I want maybe to... they, ten, uh, they, they, they filed the case in Accra. And because they, maybe the headquarters is closer to Accra, maybe they have been able to serve them. I'm in Kumase. Maybe it is it is in the VIP coming. When it's ready, maybe I'll go to the VIP station and we'll pick it. Or oh, I'm waiting for the bailiff to come with it. I want to read you part of uh, the release that they've sought. Uh, quote, a declaration that upon a true and proper interpretation of rules uh, 15 and 16, of the rules and regula regulations governing the conduct of the parliamentary primaries in the constituencies with sitting MPs, uh, candidate can come. Um, uh, please, um, let me don't let me. It, it, uh, second, no, let me. second, just a second. Second defendant by virtue of his current position uh, as the municipal chief executive uh, of Asakori Bampo Municipal Assembly area uh, was not eligible to pick nomination forms to contest in the MPP's uh, first defendant's parliamentary primaries in the Nshaisa constituency. Yes, um, thank you very much for reading that portion of the suit. The fact of the matter is that my attention has been drawn to it, that a suit has been served.
by somebody and there are some relief that he's seeking for and upon advice from my legal officers i think it will be good for me to speak about this thing on air but the fundamental point is yes you were a as you you currently the argument is that you are in a sakari mampo municipal area and if you really wanted to pursue this uh, uh, parliamentary ambitions you should have uh, pursue the ambitions using the constitutional uh, processes that governs your own party uh, primaries by picking up forms there. I think the interpretation of this lies with the National Executive Committee and now the court that the person is seeking the interpretation. So let the National Executive Committee and the court speak. Then at the end of the day, after that, you can run commentary about it. I don't want to jump the gun for me to be caught by contempt police. Uh, thank you very much, there. Uh, that is the, uh, as you heard him uh, say, uh, is something that uh, he's looking forward to defending himself. Uh, but it's a very interesting uh, matter that has been raised. And as we speak, the party has taken the decision to put uh, that particular uh, primary on hold. Uh, also joining me for a conversation right now is uh, Kwabana Adu Amankwa. Uh, he's an aspirant in the so a South constituency who has been disqualified. He joins us on Zoom uh, right now. Uh, Mr. Amankwa, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Okay, we lost him on the on the, on, on the Zoom. Uh, we'll, we'll try and, and get him back. We'll also be speaking to the party's Deputy General Secretary as uh, they attempt now to mend the defences that has uh, been... Uh, erupted the 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 challenges that had emerged on the back of the disqualifications that uh, we've uh, we've had uh, from the party uh, 17 in all the party is proceeding uh, with the primaries as you know on uh, on on next that's next week saturday uh, they are very interesting uh, individuals who are coming up uh, in in this particular contest if you contrast it here in the lecture quarters will bring you uh, all the uh, specific details and and yesterday uh, james Aveji, mm -hmm. uh at the party's uh, meeting, mm -hmm. a, it, it appeared to be very, very cordial. Mm -hmm. uh, almost everybody else was there. Mm -hmm. you, you, you get a sense that people were consulted before the decisions were made. If you read the statement and you listen mm -hmm. to the party, it appears that they've done broad consultations on this before exactly. we, we, saw, we saw the announcement. Exactly, uh, Evans, especially when you have former uh, party executives, including the former party chairman, Freddie Blay, and the former party general secretary, uh, I mean, uh, John Boydou, all attending this meeting uh, uh, to take this decision, you would have the understanding that that has been the issue. A lot broad consultation between uh, both the current executives and uh, the uh, former executives, including cabinet ministers. You saw the roads minister, the communications minister, and other ministers, including the chief uh, of staff herself, all of those big wigs in this uh, meeting and so for me the presence of former party executives gives me the understanding that there's been so much consultation broader beyond the current executives before uh, some of these decisions have been taken and how long it took the meeting to arrive at all of this gives that indication and one other area uh, that was pretty controversial prior to yesterday when we had the party uh, put out that communication mm -hmm. was uh, also was well gone yeah. where Lydia Hassan is now going to go on a post mm -hmm. uh, and the announcement had now come through that the main challenger has been disqualified he's issued a statement tonight yeah exactly Samuel Ousuamankwa now he says that in the spirit of unity and commitment to the ideals of the new patriotic party he wishes to express his profound gratitude to the party's National Executive Committee for their decision regarding the upcoming parliamentary elections in Iowa West Wagon. Now he says, quote, While I am naturally disappointed by the ruling, I wholeheartedly respect the democratic process and the collective will of our party. I extend my sincere appreciation to all delegates and supporters uh, who dedicated their time and energy to our cause over the past few months. As the adage goes, Quote, we live to fight another day. In this moment of reflection, 
I am steadfast in my dedication to the MPP and our shared vision for the future. I am prepared to contribute in any capacity deemed fit by the party with the overarching goal of securing victory in Ayaso West Wogon and breaking the eight in the upcoming 2024 elections. Yeah. Mm, okay, so for, for him, he is fine, um, Very fine. Uh, with, with what has happened, of course, but exactly. he, he fundamentally disagrees mm. uh, with, with the party's uh, position on the matter. Uh, it, we, if you go back mm. to the uh, elections that were held before uh, this you know elections that we're going to be we're going to be covering quite mm -hmm. extensively on the on saturday yeah. uh, this was the elections for their often constituencies mm -hmm. that also produced a fair bit of controversy mm -hmm. and as we've heard tonight uh, one of the aspirants in sige uh, yeah. has has told us that he is she is uh, going to actually con you know uh, pursue her ambitions to go independent mm -hmm. she had indicated at the time when the the, the results came out and she had been disqualified then mm -hmm that she's planning she's something that she wants to do but mm. tonight we've been hearing from her and she says it's something that uh you know she's now decided to go independent to do to do and and, mm. and go uh, go independent i'm talking about um uh, Eunice Lassie mm. uh, in that uh, constituency in in Sege. Sege and she contested at the time tried to contest at the time uh, in in that constituency, but was disqualified, mm -hmm. and and she's a former parliamentary candidate mm -hmm. uh, for the M for the party. Mm -hmm. And tonight says she's going independent. Politics is a numbers game, and it should I think it should be free and fair. But per my uh, my thinking, I have not been treated fairly. So due to that, I just want to contest as an independent candidate because listening to my constituents, they need me so much. So I have no choice than to contest as independent candidate. They know Eunice has a vision to develop SEGE. So for their development, and they know Eunice Lassie will never gamble with the development of this constituency. So their support is based on my, my vision and my intent to contest the election and to go to parliament and help them. Uh, let's bring in the Deputy General Secretary uh, of the NPP, Haruna Mohamed, joins us right now. Mr. Mohamed, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Good evening, Ivan. A, a lot of cracks you have to mend ahead of 27th. Um, what's the party's approach to this? Um, thank you very much. I think that this is not new to any political party or any organization at all. Um, the incident you just reported um, is about an incident that happened after the often constituency election. And um, the honorable person took a decision on her own conviction and um, the party has done a number of things if this is the decision she still stands by uh, nobody's going to begrudge her on this particular stance but the party is not going to um, leave this matter uh, unattended to and i want to put it on record that this is not something that is only happening to the new patriotic party across the globe it is something that every political party faces with after every competition except that you are an incumbent party uh, and so it's a bit more pronounced but specifically though what's the strategy to deal with these cracks as you've heard one person says i'm going in, i'm going independent um 17 i mean for that doesn't relate to the areas where you have sitting mps but you have 17 disqualified some of them already aggrieved um it's about numbers as you approach december 7 what's the strategy I think what has happened has happened, and uh, I think that we desire to move forward to concentrate more on where we have sitting members of parliament. And um, I would not be <laughs> discussing what has happened in the orphan constituencies because we have set an agenda and strategy for where the sitting members of parliament are. The party in its own works uh, would take a uh, cue from what is happening and make sure that uh, we take uh, certain decisions and strategies to be able to address that, uh, which nevertheless will not be a public discussion as to what strategy we are going to use for uh, in terms of addressing those issues. Specifically, we just talked to um, the uh, the current municipal chief executive uh, in, in the case of Inshai. So who's contesting Inshai, so by the way? And the, you've put that particular primary on hold and he's currently the MCE of Asakori Mampon Municipal Assembly. It's a subject of, of, the, of the court suit. Is it, it says he still hasn't been served at all. Uh, the party has, he's spoken to the party. He's waiting to be served in the matter. Purely the suspension of the process 
down to the, the suit that has been filed? Yes, um, I can confirm uh, officially that a service was given to the party. The party is part of the suit, uh, including the member of parliament, uh, the uh, municipal chief executive that we have mentioned. And the party being a law-abiding party, uh, we have taken cue from what has been filed and uh, 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 being served on the party. And we are very mindful of commentaries. Uh, that is going to um, have effect on this particular court uh, process. And that is why the party has taken a decision to the National Executive Committee to make sure that this particular constituency in question is given the chance to go through the process to be cleared. I, I hear you say this, uh, the suspension of the process there may be indefinite pending the outcome of the court. I can authoritatively say so. Um, we are in court. Uh, we have been served with a court process. Our lawyers will respond to the sermon, and I believe that the party will take it up from there. Uh, based on the, the outcome from court, uh, that will determine whatever thing that is going to happen in the Shiasu constituency. I mean, one of the accusations that have come up is that the party, in some cases that you disqualified individuals, is deliberately trying to protect uh, some aspirants, many of them either prominent uh, members of parliament or seven ministers. They raised the case of Bimbala, for example, where the defense minister uh, is now going on the pose, his uh, opponent has now been disqualified. How do you respond to that charge? Um, I am happy that um, you are saying that one of the allegations or perception of people uh, at the discussion of the National Executive Committee, um, disqualification of members from the various the strands of reports that came to before the National Executive Committee was the Burton reports and the Appeals Committee's report. None of these reports has indicated a protection of a prominent person or a sitting member of parliament. There has been places that even the sitting members of parliament are not going and persons that are deemed to be disqualified based on constitutional grounds and matters of great gravity to the forward march of the party's victory was considered. And I believe that uh, there is no any report to collaborate the perception of people out there. Uh, thank you very much. That's uh, Haruna uh, Mohammed. There's a deputy general secretary of the party. Uh, this is your election headquarters, Newsnight in a 